This edible money is a symbolic treat. In some parts of the world, chocolate coins are stuffed in Christmas stockings to celebrate the charity of St. Nicholas. They're also handed out to Jewish children during the festival of Hanukkah to teach them the value of money and charity. Chocolate coins don't have any purchasing power, but they do buy a lot of appreciative smiles from the kids. They start with giant chocolate bars. Each one is a four and a half kilogram hunk of pure chocolate. The workers transfer the bars to a kettle. It's a kind of double boiler. Hot water bubbles and steams inside a sleeved shell to heat and melt the chocolate. There are two and a quarter tons of liquid chocolate in this kettle. The machine now pumps the chocolate through a long pipe with different cooling zones. The chocolate thickens, but not to the point of solidification, a process called tempering. It causes the chocolate to form a precise crystal structure for just the right texture and taste. The thick liquid chocolate flows onto a conveyor that brings the chocolate under a broad blade. The blade levels it to a specific thickness and spreads it evenly, creating a long sheet of chocolate. The chocolate now begins to coagulate and harden. To spur that process, it travels through a refrigeration tunnel, which is approximately 14 meters long. This journey transforms the liquid chocolate into a soft solid. Next, they clean and prepare the dye. It's a spring-loaded device that works like a biscuit cutter to punch out round blanks. But there's one big difference. Each cutter is long and tubular. So as it punches out the chocolate blanks, they accumulate inside. The lattice work of leftovers journeys forward to be remelted into the process. So not a crumb of chocolate goes to waste. At the end of the line, dozens of coin blanks have stacked up in each magazine. And piles of leftover chocolate have accumulated in a bin that will now be transferred back to the melting pot. Now it's time to print some chocolate money. To do this, they wrap the chocolate first and then emboss both the wrap and the chocolate blank simultaneously. Here's how it works. Sheets of glossy gold foil travel between rollers to establish an even tension. Ahead, a forked arm moves two chocolate blanks between the foil sheets. Piston-like knives move in to wrap, cut and fold the foil around the blanks. The forked arm then delivers the foil wrap blanks to a die press. It stamps designs on both sides of the coins, making an impression on the foil through to the chocolate. The chocolate, although solid, is still warm enough to receive the image. Removed from the machine, here's what the die heads look like. These ones are used to emboss chocolate coins with American penny markings. As for the foil discards, they don't end up on the scrap heap. Instead, they accumulate in a bin to be sent out for recycling. They make 150,000 foil wrapped coins a day. To change the currency type, they simply switch die heads. Chocolate coins can be made in many sizes, with a range of different illustrations. The coins now spill out onto a conveyor, which takes them to a bin. All that's left now is the packaging, which will be the traditional mesh bag. From start to finish, it takes less than an hour to make a chocolate coin. Gold dollars or five dollar poker chips, every day is a jackpot of chocolate money at this factory. So there's never any shortage of edible cash. Only decisions to be made, poker chip or chocolate penny. Well, you can always flip a coin. <laughs>